In this video, I want to remind you about some of the key ideas we have learned during this series of lessons about our Earth. In the first lesson, you learned about the structure of our Earth. Our Earth is layered, with the four layers being the inner core, the outer core, the mantle, the crust, and the atmosphere. The inner core is solid and found at the center of the planet. The outer core surrounds this and is liquid. The core is mainly made from iron and nickel. The mantle is next. This is mostly solid rock, but it can flow. This flow is very slow and is driven by something called convection currents, which happen as hotter rock rises and cooler rock sinks. You will learn more about this in geography. The crust is the solid layer at the Earth's surface. This is between 80 to 40 kilometers thick. Our atmosphere is a mixture of gases which surround the Earth. The part which is nearest the Earth is called the troposphere. The main gases found in the troposphere are nitrogen, 78%, oxygen, 21%, and argon, 1%. There is also a very small amount of carbon dioxide present at 0.04%, along with a number of other gases present in even smaller amounts too. There are three groups of rocks, sedimentary, igneous, and metamorphic. Sedimentary rocks are made up from millions of tiny grains which are compacted and cemented together. You can see these grains if you look at the rock with a magnifying glass. So if you look here at the picture of limestone, you can see the individual grains that make up its structure. These grains make the rock porous, meaning it can absorb water and air. The grains can be broken off easily, making the rock very, very soft. Sedimentary rocks are useful building materials. For example, limestone is used to make cement. Sedimentary rocks are made through a number of different processes. First, other rocks are broken into smaller pieces called sediments. This can be done by physical, chemical or biological weathering. Physical weathering includes freeze-thaw, chemical weathering includes acid rain, and biological weathering is caused by plants and animals. But the purpose of all of these is to break the rock into smaller chunks. Movement away of sediments from the original rock is known as erosion. Transport moves the sediments further still, and this can be done by things such as the wind, gravity, or by water, such as when a river runs through a valley. When the sediments stop moving, this is known as deposition. Layers of the sediments will build up on top of each other. And as the sediments begin to form layers, their weight squashes the lower sediments together, and this forms a sedimentary rock through a process known as compaction. Alternatively, another substance can stick the sediments together, which is known as cementation. The other two types of rock, igneous and metamorphic, are quite different to sedimentary rock. Both are harder and do not contain gaps between particles, which means they are non-porous. Igneous rocks are durable. Igneous rocks are found when molten rock cools and solidifies. If this happens slowly, underground, the crystals are large and rocks such as granite are made. If the cooling is much more rapid, the crystals are smaller and rocks such as basalt are made. Metamorphic rocks are made when other rocks are changed by heat and or high pressure. Marble is an example of a metamorphic rock and that is made when limestone is heated up below the Earth's surface. And you can see the picture of marble on this slide. We then went on to learn about the rock cycle. The rock cycle shows how all of these different processes involved in the formation of rocks link together. This diagram shows how these different processes are related. You can see some of the different types we've talked about already, such as sedimentation, compression, erosion, and transportation. You can see how, this, how weathering breaks the rocks up and forms the layers forming sedimentary rock. And you can see how over time the pressure of this can melt the rocks and form magma underground. And when the magma leaves the volcano here and cools, that is how an igneous rock can be formed. Metamorphic is formed here through squashing and heating under high pressure. And together, this makes the rock cycle. When rocks are pushed to the surface from underground, it's known as uplift and earthquakes can sometimes happen at the same time as this takes place. Carbon dioxide is a hugely important chemical on the Earth. In the lesson about 
what car in this lesson you learned about what carbon dioxide is used for and you learned about the processes which add or remove it from the atmosphere. On this slide, you can see a diagram showing the carbon cycle. Processes which remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere include photosynthesis by plants and the dissolving of carbon dioxide into the ocean. Processes which release carbon dioxide into the atmosphere include combustion, which is burning fossil fuels, respiration, and volcanic eruptions. Carbon stores, which is where carbon is stored, include the atmosphere, soil, plants, fossil fuels, the oceans, and sedimentary rocks. The graphs on this slide show how the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere has increased over the last 40 years. So this graph on the left here, you can see as the time went by, the amount of carbon dioxide has increased on average every single year. There is a general pattern of up and down as the seasons take place, where in the summer, trees are performing more photosynthesis, so the amount of carbon dioxide decreases slightly. And you can see on this line with the blue line, that over the same time period, so from around 1960, through to 2000, how much the temperature of carbon dioxide has also, uh, how much the temperature of the Earth has also increased due to the carbon dioxide. This is a major issue for the planet because carbon dioxide has been discovered to be a greenhouse gas. This means it causes global warming and climate change. The consequences of this include drought, flooding, sea level rise, habitat destruction, and crop failure. All of these on their own are extremely negative effects but together, they will have a significant impact upon the planet. This diagram shows how the greenhouse effect works. First, sunlight passes through the atmosphere and warms the Earth's surface. As the Earth warms, it emits heat in the form of infrared radiation. This is trapped by the greenhouse gases, such as carbon dioxide, and reflected back to Earth, which further warms the planet. You're going to learn more about this when you get to GCSE. And the explanation in year 9 and 10 is much, much more complicated than this. In the final lesson, we learned about recycling. Most resources on the Earth are finite. This means that one day we will run out of them. For example, crude oil is used to make fuels, plastics, and other chemicals. Crude oil is a fossil fuel, which takes millions of years to form, and therefore it will one day run out. Recycling is a great way to conserve resources such as this. For example, a plastic cup can be recycled at the end of its useful life, being turned into a new product, such as a bottle, rather than it being thrown away into landfill. This conserves raw materials as new crude oil is not needed to make the new bottle. Additionally, recycling uses less energy than using the new raw material. Recycling has become a lot more popular in recent years and the public have become more aware of its importance. However, there is still a number of people who do not recycle their waste. Maybe you can think why this might be the case. You now need to log into Caboodle and complete the checkpoint activity to review your understanding. You should take your time and submit your work to your teacher via Caboodle. You can find the task under the assessment tab when you log in. It will look like this picture shown here on the first slide. I hope that you found this video useful and we are looking forward to seeing you all soon. In the meantime, keep safe and keep in touch. Goodbye.